Hello my friends, John LaRufa here with another Straight Up Solo. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at Turing Machine. In case you couldn't read it before. You really can't read it now anyway. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this game looks like. This is a solo puzzle. Now you could play it with other people, for sure. And whoever would get the answer and the fewest questions, um, you know, would win. And so there is an element like that. But there's no real interaction with each other. It's it's you're You're doing this this kind of thing all by yourself. So let me go ahead, show you what it looks like, show you how a few questions and verifications go, and then I'll tell you what I think, all right? Okay, folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And if you have, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. Like I said, this game is a puzzle game. It's a deduction game, okay? And some people say not a game at all, just a puzzle. And I could see what they're saying. But it is kind of a game in the fact that you're trying to solve this puzzle, but not just solve it, but solve it as fast as possible with as few um, rounds and as few verification questions as you can. So the whole goal of the game is to figure out a three number combination where the numbers can be one through five, okay, for uh, each of the three numbers. So you've got three combinations of numbers and they're one through five. Now, the um, numbers also have a color slash shape, which will um, correspond to some of these verifier cards right here. And then you have these um, cards that they, well, basically what this does is this will tell you whether something about the code is true or uh, true or not. So the code is hidden inside these conditions, okay? And what do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> For instance, this first card right here, it says that this verifier verifies the blue triangle number compared to one. So it's going to tell you whether it is one or it's equal to one or greater than one. Okay, that's the only thing this is going to tell you. So what happens is <clears throat> when you go to make a solution, you're going to make a solution with any three numbers. Okay, so let's just give you this example right here. So I'm going to go two, one and one, and you put them in the order. It doesn't matter which order, but I just keep them like this. So you line it up, and notice how these are just like, these triangle, uh, square, and circles are just to center the card. And then what you'll do is you'll use that verifier and a specific card for the puzzle to see if that condition is true or not. So in this case, now I'm not doing this for the puzzle. I'm just gonna show you an example. In this case, let's say this card was my verifier, and this card was part of the code right here. Okay, what you would do is you would take this card and you would put it under here and you would see what is revealed. In this case, what this tells you is that the condition two is not legitimate for that verifier. Okay, so what that would mean if this was part of the game, this would say, well, this was false. Number two, okay, is false. So what that means to me is if this was one, it would be true. Because it's two, it's false. Because this number is not greater than one. See how you have to read it? You have to say two is like, this is my number, is greater than one. That's false. So that means, deductively, that this must equal one. And just to prove that that's true, let's put it as one, okay? See how it's true? See how you got that? So, there, these work in tandem with those other conditions, okay? And so what you're trying to do, again, is to solve the puzzle using this type of logic. And so what happens is on your turn is you get, you choose a combination of numbers and then you put them through the verifier up to three times. So the combination numbers, like I said, could be anything you want. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to write down, okay, so for this combination, what do I know? and I put it through these verifiers. Let's just go ahead and try it. So this is the real puzzle. And when you set up a puzzle, what it's gonna do is it is going to tell you, I'll just give you an example here. This is the puzzle I just set up. Now, apparently there are millions of these online, but I'm just getting through a couple. Here's uh, so far. So here's number two, okay? So that's what I'm using as an example this time. It says use verifier four, nine, oops, I'm bumping the thing, sorry. Four, nine, 13, and 17 in spots A, B, C, and D. And the corresponding cards for A, B, and C, and D need to be those cards in the blue section. So what happens is 
you look at the blue section, you find exactly which one that is for the thing, and you mark off A, B, C, and D on there. Now, if you're doing a more complicated situation, you'd also have a D, I'm sorry, an E and an F. But in this case, we don't have those, so we don't have to worry about wor working through that. They also tell you a little bit on the puzzle how much, what, what effect luck plays into it and what effect, you know, challenge or skill or difficulty plays into it. So here's my verifiers right now on the board. I have this one, which compares my yellow square to the number four. So I will choose something and decide if it's less than four, equal to four, greater than four, depending on what I put in there. And the way you have to do it is you have to look at this and say, four is such and such. And so if I chose the two, then basically I'm tracking this condition. Two is less than four. Is that true? Is two my number? And if it comes out, yes, a check, then it is. And if it comes out X, then you know that condition's not true. But you don't know which one other one is. This one says, how many number threes are in my code? Zero, one, two, or three. This one says, the number that is my yellow square compared to the number that is my uh, purple circle. And so you, you're going to have a combination of those. And then finally, this one says, verifies how many numbers there are in the code that are even. So it'll tell you zero, one, two, three. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose a number. So thinking on this, let's see if I'm going to get lucky. I'm going to choose the four, okay, because I want to see if I get lucky enough. So I'll use four there and see if I can get this, it knocks it out right away, okay? So that's one. The other thing I want to do is know how many even numbers there are. So this is already one even number. Let's see if I can get two even numbers, okay? See if that is true. And then this is numbers of three, okay? So how many threes do I have in here? And so if I don't choose any three, that'll verify that there are no threes whatsoever. If I choose one three, that means that one of them is three. It doesn't mean that that one specifically is three. It just means there is a three. So let's go ahead and choose the three for this one, okay? Oops, I said the three. Um, so what am I going to choose? I'm going to choose three, four, two, okay? So three, four, two is going to be my my guess or my first number. So I'm gonna write that over here, three, four, two. I'm gonna go ahead and check condition A. So condition A, what you wanna do is you wanna put this right under there without studying the card. And lo and behold, what does it say? Well, it says X. So that means that this condition is not true, meaning four is not equal, the number is not equal to four because I chose a four in here. So what I know right now is that first, this one, the square, does not equal four. That's all I know from there, okay? So we've got that, and this is an X, so I write that down saying it failed that condition. So that way later I can say three, four, two failed this condition. I can remember what it said. All right, let's check. Um, let's check the even numbers. So I've got two even numbers here. Let's see about this one, okay? So is it correct that two of my numbers are even? incorrect. See how there's an X right there? So that means that condition D also fails. So I know that two of the numbers are not even. All right. So that's in more, another piece. Shoot. <laughs> I wrote this in B when I amend it for D. Okay. Then put that back. Let's go ahead and see if I've got any threes in here. So let's see if I get this. Hook it up, oh, lo and behold, also fail. So what that means is condition B also failed. And that means that there is not um, just one three. So that was round one. Three, four, two. I learned a lot about what the number wasn't. I didn't learn anything about what it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose another number. And I'm going to pass it through another set of conditions again and see if I can figure it out. And that's kind of how the game goes. You keep passing it through conditions until you find something that's true. And then when you find something that's true, it starts to narrow down what you're doing. You also can cross things out here. So I know right now that this was not true, right? That's not it wasn't four, so that's off the list. 
And the whole goal is to solve this puzzle as fast as possible by answering as, or by checking as few conditions as possible. When you're done, you can go on the website and the website will tell you how fast the computer's AI was able to solve the puzzle. So for instance, and, uh, and this is what the dry erase marker is for so you don't get your cards confused. Um, so for instance, I did the first one and I thought it was pretty cool. I got it done in the third round and I only took seven guesses. Well, the computer did on the second round and only took five guesses, so I lost. So you're kind of playing against the uh, what their generated AI was able to do in the solo mode, and that's how it works. If you don't have access to the internet, you're kind of out of luck, so you're gonna have to figure that out. Now, to verify which number, you can ver you will verify there, or if you're playing in person, they do have the solutions for the first 20 puzzles in the lower right corner of the, of the front of the rule book. But then there's also, I guess there's millions you could do online. So there's lots of replayability here. There's also, look at how many verifier cards we have. So there are a ton, there are 50, um, 48 different verifying cards and they can be pretty complex, right? So it all depends on the ease and the skill. And as you ramp up, they change what you're trying to do and it's gonna be difficult. Plus, you could tell, you know, you've got so many different, um, code combinations to choose from literally millions you're not gonna you're never gonna have to play the same puzzle twice there's no way you could ever get through that the other thing is you don't want to necessarily study what this is that's why they have you mark it off because you don't want to accidentally see a pattern in that card which would tell you which would reveal something about the number that you don't want to that you shouldn't know okay so that's the other thing now as you get going and as you get smarter with this game you will be able to deduce other things without even asking questions. You know, you'll be able to say, well, if this condition is true and those two are false, that means that this can't be true either. And so you start to try to cross that off. And that's where the deduction comes from. The deduction comes from those combinations. And that's where I think the game really shines because you put your brain to work and kind of really think through the puzzle. The game probably takes you about 20 minutes until you've got a solution. Maybe a little more as you're learning the conditions and such. But it's pretty quick, pretty easy to set up and pretty easy to actually play. Now, it doesn't mean it's easy to solve. I'm just saying that there's not a whole lot of legwork to get it to the table and do what you're doing. It can be a real brain burner. I'm sure as the puzzles get more uh, challenging, it can really be tough. The other thing is, is you don't have to worry about it, even though there's only 20 puzzles in here. Um, you know, if you, if you try to solve one, you get the wrong answer. You don't have to worry about forgetting it because literally there's a scan you can go to just generate random puzzles to Kingdom Come. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you about what I think about this game from a solo perspective. All right, and that is Touring Machine, and you kind of got a good feel for how it plays, right? I showed you that first example, kind of showing you some true things, and you saw that first turn I took, those three th conditions showed falsities um, that I could cross off and eliminate stuff. So I like the game. I think the game is very novel. It is a puzzle. There's no doubt about it. The you're not going to sit down and just play this game and, and have a different strategy. You're just going to use deduction to try to figure out what is going on. And that's very similar to another game I have, Planet X, although the mechanics and the deduction system and everything else is completely different. This still kind of scratches that same puzzly itch. So I feel like if you like puzzles that are based on logic and dedu deducing what's going on, similar to Sudoku, but this you know is a completely different kind of puzzling, um, then you'll like this game. This isn't a game that I think you're going to bust out during the part, you know, um, well, and again, we're just talking about solo here. Not a game you're going to play when you're mentally spent, when you just don't feel like, you know, thinking, you know, through stuff and trying to find relationships between things. If you just want to do something simple, this isn't simple. Um, it'll definitely put your brain to work and the harder the puzzle you solve, the more difficult it'll be, the more questions you'll have to ask, the longer it'll take you to solve the puzzle. I think it's kind of cool that there's millions of options, and I think, although I would prefer the web app, I know why they're, or like an iOS app, I know why they're doing it on the web because they say it's easier to update, and I get that. It's probably cheaper for them, too. They don't have to pay any fees or anything like that. So it's not a big deal. It's a very minimal, um, easy-to-use website. It's just not something you're really going to be able to take anywhere um, and play to know what the... Um, how fast the computer would go. Now there's things you can print off and I'm sure you could probably pre-generate puzzles if you really want to try, but most places you'll have the internet, right? So 
that'll be what you're, you know, what you're using. Anyway, I enjoy it. I don't think it's for everybody. If people don't like deductions, they're not going to like this game. If they do, they're going to be delighted with this game. It is, uh, it's fun. And I'm happy to have my collection. I love novel and new things. And this is definitely both new and novel and does not have a representation. The closest thing, of course, is, you know, Planet X. And I really like the game. I had that game for years and enjoy playing it. I'm going to enjoy playing this too. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate everybody. Whatever you play in the future, hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy.